Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video and welcome to today's review of the 2020 MacBook Air. Specifically, this is the Intel model and I will show you the specs here. If we head up to about this Mac, you can see we are running the 1.1 gigahertz quad core i5. We have eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. We have Intel Iris Plus G7 graphics, which I'll get into in just a minute because this MacBook actually has different graphics depending on the CPU you buy. Of course, we have our 13.3 inch retina display and we're coming in at 250 gigabytes of flash storage. So base configuration apart from the CPU. So let's talk about that CPU. So these are the different options and this is not well known because it was never advertised by Apple. So if you have the dual core i3 MacBook Air, you get Iris Plus G4 graphics. If you have the quad core i5, such as this model, or the quad core i7, you get Iris Plus G7. So let's scroll through here and we can take a look. You see how much better this G7 performs compared to the G4. Everything is faster. So that's something that was never advertised and would be difficult to figure out if you didn't know what you were looking for. So the going price for this MacBook is about this much and I think it's a fair deal if you can find one in really nice condition. So I picked this model up for that amount right there, a little lower than market value and I think that's a pretty good deal. Of course this has the upgraded Core i5 which is nice, but the biggest problem that this computer has is the thermal solution. This MacBook cannot keep itself cool. And it is a very common problem that these computers have. So without taking mine apart, I will show you guys a picture here from a teardown of a 2020 MacBook Air. So here's the problem. The CPU with the GPU attached to it is underneath this heatsink here and the cooling fan is over here. So traditionally, this heat sink would be attached with a heat pipe going over here that's gonna allow that heat to transfer and then be cooled by the fan. This MacBook, along with the 2018-2019 MacBook Air, doesn't have that. So the way this works is the fan spins and it pulls air in from this side, which then flows over the heat sink, I guess you could call it that, and then gets pushed out and it's not effective at all, resulting in this computer overheating very quickly. Within just a couple seconds of doing something intensive, the CPU reaches 100 degrees Celsius or around 220 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a big problem because the computer can't cool itself with a fan, so the only way to stay cool is to throttle that CPU, and that means a substantial loss in performance. That said, this CPU is significantly better than the 2018 MacBook Air. But you cannot use this to edit videos, edit photos, or do anything intensive because of that thermal limitation. What is this computer good for? Well, it's got a really nice keyboard. This is the updated Magic Keyboard that Apple introduced in 2019 with the 16-inch MacBook Pro and has since made its way into Apple's entire lineup and it feels very nice. So I will go ahead and demo just how the keyboard sounds, but it feels really nice to type on, in my opinion, much better than the butterfly keyboard. So the keyboard's great, so what is this computer good for? Well, it's certainly good for typing documents and doing PowerPoints, doing spreadsheets, and browsing the web, typing emails, any sort of light activity, even watching YouTube videos on here does just fine. The computer is very thin and light. As you can see here, I'll go ahead and close it. You can see just how thin this MacBook Air is. You've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports over here, which is pretty limiting, especially if you're trying to charge the computer as well as connect additional peripherals, such as a keyboard or a monitor. Got a headphone jack here on the side, and that is it in terms of connectivity. Another shortcoming of this computer is the battery. So comparing this MacBook Air to the Apple Silicon MacBook Air, the difference in performance and battery life is significant. So we're gonna do a quick comparison here on Apple's website. 
we've got the Intel 2020 on the left and the MacBook Air M1 on the right. So the display is the same. The Intel model's got the quad core CPU, which is what mine has, but the M1's got an eight core CPU. Both can get 16 gigabytes of memory, two terabytes of storage, but here's the battery life. So 12 hours here on this Intel MacBook Air, 18 on Apple Silicon. And you don't have the thermal issue on Apple Silicon. The computer doesn't even have a fan. It doesn't need it. There is no throttling on that device. M1 also features the P3 color gamut, which is gonna result in better colors. But apart from that, basically everything else on the device is the same. Now, I will say the speakers on this MacBook sound amazing. If you don't have a MacBook or you have a really old model and you get one of these, you're gonna be amazed just at how good the quality on the speakers is. It's incredible for the small size of this device. You would not expect it. Something else that's worth mentioning here on this Intel MacBook Air is the ability to run Windows. So there is native Windows 10 and I believe Windows 11 support here on this MacBook Air, something that is not available on Apple Silicon. So if you have programs that require Windows, you can install it very easily without the need of running a virtual machine. It is natively supported on this computer. The webcam is not great. It is only a 720p webcam up there and the microphones are average at best. The display is very nice. So it's a 13.3 inch retina display and it's got good colors, good contrast, and the brightness is decent. But if you take it outside, you're gonna struggle a little bit to see what's on the display. This computer also has a phenomenal trackpad. It's force touch, so there's no moving parts. And that means you can click anywhere on it and get the exact same feedback. Old trackpads you used to kind of have to click towards the bottom to get a good feel, but the new ones you can click anywhere. It does not matter. So great keyboard, great trackpad, good speakers, great display, bad performance, bad cooling system, poor battery life and poor connectivity, good support for Windows 10, and this does support macOS Sonoma, and I'd imagine it's gonna get at least one more year of macOS updates before Apple ends support for this. So should you buy this here in 2024? If you can find one for a decent price, I would say less than $300, and it's in good condition, low battery cycles, and you don't need to do anything intensive such as video editing, photo editing, or music production, I think it's a solid device. However, I would strongly recommend you spend a couple more hundred dollars, if possible, to find yourself an M1 MacBook Air. I would also recommend going for a 2020 Intel MacBook Pro. Those have a much better cooling system, so that's kind of a happy in between this MacBook Air and the Apple Silicon. The prices for those are around 400. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this helped you figure out whether or not this MacBook Air is good for you. I think for many people, this is a wonderful device, very thin, very light, super portable, and will do everything most users need it to do. However, if you're doing anything intensive, such as playing games, even something as simple as Minecraft, it does not run well here on this MacBook Air. I would recommend finding a MacBook Pro from 2020, or if you can afford it, get yourself an M1 MacBook Air. That's my advice. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another one.